and welcome to a new video of our Open Computers tutorial series. I'm here with Sangar, the lead designer of Open Computers, and Daka Total, our cameraman. Uh, this video is a uh, yeah uh, is inserted between the next video because we realized by recording it that we uh, should uh, explain the basic concepts of how to use a computer. So this is especially for all these that want to use open computers but uh, don't know how to n navigate around on it and also yeah, mainly just want to use it and not so much program it on it. So yeah, I would say let's go right into it. Yeah, so basically we were done with the next video and then realized, so okay, so what about those people that have no idea how Linux works? Um, so, if you ever used some command shell ever, you probably won't have much problems at all. If you have not, not to fear, it's not that bad. So, when you start your computer, you will see this screen with this, what's called a shell. So, this cursor blinking here is telling you, okay, you can enter text. Hey, you can enter text, so I can enter text. Um, you can enter any text, of course, but it will tell you, whoa, so file not found. What this really means is there's no program that's called that way. So there's a bunch of built-in programs in OpenOS uh, which you can run from this shell, which you just run by entering the name of the program. Um, a few of the most basic ones you will need to know to navigate on your computer is uh, ls, which lists the contents of the directory you're currently in. So this little slash on the left here indicates which directory you're currently in. and then you can see, okay, this is uh, the list of folders and there's one file in this directory. And green files are usually programs which can be executed. And you can also say, okay, I want to know which files are in the bin folder. So you just provide the folder name of the folder you want to list. And this will tell you all the files which are in the bin folder. And these are also, coincidentally, uh, are the programs that are built in into OpenOS. So if you need to know which programs are available to you, just ls bin and you will see all of these. And to run it, you just enter the name of the program with or without the extension though. So the .lu extension is optional. So for example, I don't know, what's interesting? What's the date? So to enter the, uh, and output the date, the current date and the time of the Minecraft world, you enter the date command and tell you, okay, this is the current time. Um, Right, so what else is interesting? Well, you might want to change your current working directory. So, as a, again, this is your current working directory, so this is where you're located on the file system, basically. And to navigate it, you can change your directory. So you, for that, you use the uh, CD program, which is this one, which basically means change, dir, change directory. So, for example, I can go into the uh, lib directory. And now I'll see, okay, now I'm in the lib directory. And if I run the list command again, this will now be relative to my current working directory, so the lib directory, and I'll see, okay, the, these are the libraries, so the files in this directory. And there's some sort of shortcuts, so for example, to go up one directory, you just do cd dot dot. And that should be enough to get you started for navigating around the file system. So the basic concept you have to understand is that the file system is a tree, so there's, it's, if you have your normal operating system browser, files, file browser, not the internet browser, you know, the file browser, and you have your folders and uh, stuff, this is the same concept, just that you only have a text representation and no GUI. So these are nested and you can go down and up in them. Uh, the next more complex part of this is the concept of mounting. So there's one program which is called mount. Uh, somewhere in here, there we go. And this program is used to list mount points. So a mount point is basically some path in the file system at which uh, an actual uh, file system and the file system tree, so, uh, better word, um, where an actual file system is mounted. So on this computer, there are two file system, the temporary file system, which is just for temporary files. So you can just dump stuff in there you will not need for any time. And the OpenOS file system, which is the floppy disk containing the OpenOS operating system. And for each file system, we will then see, okay, there's 
um, these are the mount points. So the OpenOS is mounted on root, so the top level, and in this folder, MNT and some numbers, and the temp is mounted on temp and also in MNT some numbers. So this MNT folder you may not care so much about. It's basically just a folder where every file system automatically gets a folder in based on the file system's address. So what you see if you look at the item, oh wait, floppy disk drive, at the item, so there's this number at the bottom, and based on that number, a folder is created in the amount folder. So if we list the contents of that folder, we see, okay, it's exactly those two, as we would expect. Now, the tricky part is to realize that these are the same. So the two mounts for the two file systems, each they are for the uh, individual file systems are the same. So the root one and the MNT3061 are identical. So if I do ls in the root directory, it will show me this. But if I do ls MNT in the MNT306 directory, it's the same. And well, almost. Ex Including the temp, of course, but never mind that. So the contents that are listed of this file system um, are available through both of these paths. So what you can then do if you want, you don't have to, but let's say you have um, your own hard drive and you put it in. Um, you'll see, okay, this is 02A. So this as expected, is now mounted in MNT02A, but that's not very handy to work with. So let's say we want to mount this somewhere else where we can uh, better remember the name of the path. Uh, what we can do for that is we mount um, the, uh, the this, uh, this um, hard drive at a different point in the file system tree. Um, before we do that, there's another program which is useful in the bin directory, which I mentioned, I don't know, in the first or in the third video, which is called label. So you can change the name of the disk. Um, this is probably redundant now, but I don't care. Um, so we name this disk. Uh, you will have notice. seen this. You may have seen this before or you will see <laughs> it again, but well, you know doesn't hurt that much. Um, so then we can go ahead and say, okay, I want to mount test, which is now the label of this disk. Um, I want to mount this somewhere on my file system tree. So let's say I mount it on um, root slash um, test. So now if we have a look, we see, okay, now test is mounted on the MNT0 today, but also on test. So if we ls in the root directory now, we see Okay, here's a new folder, which is test, which represents the contents of this hard drive. So this way you can basically create a layout you can work with easier. Okay, so now we know how to navigate the file system and how to mount uh, disks and where to mount, how to mount them where we want them, how to change the names of them. Um, what we also may want to know is uh, how do we work with files on this file system. So if we have another look at the available programs, um, what's also useful is uh, CP. You will want to know that one and MV, so copy and move, um, which do exactly what you'd expect them to do. They copy files and they move files. So. Uh, let's say we have in this root directory, there's a file called init.lua. We can go ahead and copy that. So we use a copy command. So if we just run it without any arguments, it will tell us what to do. So these are this is how it's used. So the format for mo most programs, when you run them without uh, arguments, will give you a short usage description. And how to read this is basically um, the name of the program and then a list of optional, usually optional arguments, so options which are explained below, and then additional arguments to the program. So in this case, we have um, these four options, which do different things. We can either combine them into one string, as seen in this part here in the example, 
or we can um, specify them individually. And then from is the is either one file or a list of files, and to is uh, a target file or directory. So to copy the init lure dot file, we say okay, we copy init lure to uh, let's say test dot my init dot lure. And it'll do some work in the background, and then if we list the contents of test, we'll see there it is. And this is now the uh, it's now a copy of the file that is here in the root directory. Um, and to clean up, well, there's the rm problem, which is remove, so we can just delete it again with uh, remove my edit lua, which will remove the file, and it's gone. Okay, so this is copying, moving, deleting files, whatever you need. Um, if you do ever need to create files, so this will be covered in more detail in the next video for actually writing programs, but to just create simple files, there's an edit program, which is an editor, just a text editor. So you can say, okay, um, to create a new file, you just enter the name of the file. So I create test.txt and this will tell you, okay, it's a new file. Um, this is the name of the file. It's empty, so you see nothing is there. You can enter some text in it. And then it tells you, yeah, save it like this, close it like that. So we do that, control S, oops, I didn't save it. Uh, control S to save it, control W to close it. And then if we list the contents of our hard drive, we see there's this file now. And if we open it again, we can see the contents were actually saved. So that's how you edit files if you need to. And that's the basics for programs, I think. So this is all you should need to navigate your file systems and work with your file systems. So moving files, copying files, figuring out what files are where. Um, and the easy thing to figure out what a program does is if you can read at least some code is to just open the file with the editor. So let's say, I don't know, what do we want to know? We want to know what uh, what's this cat doing there? Um, so we can open this file. We just see the program code for this program and can read through it and maybe glance what it does or maybe not. So this program basically just takes a file and prints out the contents of the file to the, to the screen. But yeah, that's about it for the basics, I think. And for everything else, you can either look for f uh, for custom programs on the internet, or I don't know, um, one built-in way for well, everyone's looking um, built-in way for getting new programs. So <laughs> sneak, sneak. Um, we see the built-in ones. Um, there's also a few programs written by other people on the internet already. And one very neat program that was contributed as a disk uh, that you can find in dungeons, or you can just cheat in creative mode, is called OPPM, which is the Open Programs Program Manager, I think. Um, so Open Programs is basically a little group of people um, that have uh, repositories on GitHub where they share their programs. And this program can be used, so this OPPM can be used to download those. So what you need to use it is um, you need an internet card because, well, it needs to download stuff from the internet. So internet card is just a card like any other. Uh, you can craft it. And if you have internet card, you can then connect to the internet. And OPPM makes use of this to basically get a list of available programs and to download the actual programs. So as with most programs, you can just enter the name to get a list of how to use it. And the basic pro um, commands you want to know is list, so to get a list of all available programs and install, which installs a program of a specific name. So if you get the list of available programs, it starts downloading all the different lists of programs per user, get a uh, list of overall programs, and then show it to you. So this is all the programs that are currently available. And to install a program, uh, you can just run OPPM with the name of the program you want to install. And it'll download the files, it will 
put them where they need to be so the operating system can find them. So you can just run the program. You don't have to explicitly specify the path to the program and then you can run your downloaded programs. So that's that. So if you need any additional programs and don't want to write them yourself, this is a good way to just getting a whole bunch of programs easily without having to copy paste them into a safety or anything like that. Right. Yeah, but if you do know how to write programs and have very neat programs, we encourage you to go to the site, uh, apply for an account and yeah, make your programs available for everyone else. Definitely. So uh, if you want to contribute any programs to this uh, neat little collaboration, just uh, either drop by on the forums or on IRC and you'll get a repository in the open programs list and you can get listed in this overview in the package manager very easily. So if you do want to contribute programs, you're very much encouraged to do so and we're very happy for additional programs. Okay, so I think okay. that's it for this video. I hope you got a good overview how to yeah, navigate in the computer. And yeah, as always, uh, these uh, programs we shown are uh, for in version 1.3, so there might be more programs in uh, upcoming versions, but the existing program shouldn't uh, cease to exist. <laughs> so uh, yeah, everything we showed should still work in future versions but as always there might be changes so if something doesn't work as expected look at the change log and yeah you should be fine so any further comments or just game of life programming <laughs> just having some fun yeah i think that's it for the basics so the next video will be a bit more in-depth on how to program the computers actually. So you will be expected to at least figure out your for yourself how Lua works for the next video. Uh, I hope that's not too big of a problem. So yeah, we'll so uh, Lua information can be found all over the internet. So yeah, we will just co cover yeah how to use it in open computers, but the semantics of the language you should know yourself. Or learn yourself, yes. But if you if you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to drop on drop by on the RC. So everyone is very helpful there. And if you new to Lua, don't hesitate to come by either. We will definitely at least try to help you. Okay. So yep. that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time. See you.